Happy New Year! This is Char from The Real Kitchen for Real People. And I hope and trust that everyone have a blessed year this year. We had such a tough time last year and I'm looking forward to a better year. A year full of blessings. Today, I like to feature my uh, spin on a lemon cake for the new year. So here are the ingredients. It's quite a few ingredients, so I'm going to kind of mix it and tell you what I put in it. Uh, first, I have my dry ingredients, which uh, entail two and a half cups of cake flour, a teaspoon of baking soda, a teaspoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of salt, and one and three-fourths cup of sugar. So I combined them all in this bowl and I'm mixing them all up just so you can mix it, mix it all up good with a spoon. Just mix it up real good. And then I will add my liquids to this. And the ingredients, like I said, uh, here are the ingredients here. But I'm going to mix them and I'll tell you what's in it to kind of shorten your video a little bit. Okay, so here are your dry ingredients. Now I'm getting ready to add three-fourths cup of oil. To your flour mixture. Okay, and I'm going to blend this with the blender. Bring that all in there. And it'll look like this. Okay. Now I'm going to add uh, one fourth. A uh, cup of the butter flavor shortening, and it's the uh, Crisco kind, and I like it because it gives it a good butter taste. So I'm going to add that to the ingredients and blend that in. Make sure you get it all off your package. Okay. Gonna blend that in. Now I'm getting ready to add my two eggs, two large eggs. the new year in go with okay then I want to add one teaspoon of vanilla flavoring or extract and then I'm going to add uh, one tablespoon of the lemon extract so this is uh, the lemon and I'm going to add one tablespoon give it that real rich lemon taste
Now here's the one tablespoon of lemon extract. I want to add that to my mixture. And then I'm going to add a teaspoon of my lemon zest. One teaspoon of lemon zest. We're going to mix that all up together. teaspoon of vinegar. And I'm going to gradually add the buttermilk to it. I'm going to splatter it. Like lemon, you would love this recipe. My aunt used to make it. Aunt Dean, Wilma Dean. And everybody would just be going crazy over it. And hopefully you will like it. seems like overwhelming when you've seen all the ingredients, but it's a simple cake to make. Okay, now that I have that mixture, I'm going to add my uh, half a teaspoon of distilled vinegar, white. Okay. Half a teaspoon of the vinegar. Vinegar is what gives it that a velvet texture. Okay. Now I'm going to mix that on low. vinegar you want to add uh, mix together one third cup of hot water and two tablespoons of your fresh lemon juice you can squeeze from your zested lemon and mix that up in your, in your water one third cup of water to two tablespoons of lemon fresh lemon juice and then we're going to stir that in your batter and mix it. Now you want to add about 
that's, this is optional. If you want to add uh, some uh, yellow color, you know, food coloring, you can add like two, two drops, one or two drops, just depending on how yellow you want your lemon cake because it's already a little yellow from your eggs and, and the butter. But I'm gonna add two drops. One, two. Just to give it a little bit more desirable look. And then I'm gonna mix that up. And if it's not yellow enough for you, you can add a drop of you know, just try to add one drop at a time so you won't get overwhelmed with the yellow or overboard. But you see how that kind of darkens it up a little bit to make it a little bit more yellow. And I think I'm going to add one more drop. Total I added was three. Oops. Right there. Three. Okay. And I think about three gives you that color you want. Just add a little bit peach more of zest. Give it that extra zap. So you can kind of be creative with it however you want it. And stick to the basic part and then you can kind of add other stuff. Okay, now this is how your head, your head mix will be. It'll be uh, it's for two nine inch pans. So you grease your nine inch pans and flour them. And your oven should be set on 325. And I do that prior to the starting. I kind of told you late, but. Sometime I get ahead of myself. Okay. But this is how your mix will look it's a pretty yellow and you can make it as dark as you want yellow like i said uh, just depending on your de your design okay now what i'm going to do is pour these into my prepared cake pans and bake it at 325 for about 25 minutes because you don't want to over bake it. it it ruins it so check it after 20 minutes really depends on your oven you know some people's oven is regulated a little different so i'm gonna go over here and pour them in my hand okay now i'm gonna pour my batter into two prepared nine inch cake pans i'm gonna try to even it out as much as you can. Just kind of eyeball it. Just make sure you have the same amount in each pan. And be sure to get all the goodies and then you can give the, the uh, bowl to a family member, member to finish it out. I remember we used to just die to get this cake bowl to eat out of it as kids. Okay, that's how it'll look, and then you just kind of pat it to get the air bubbles out of there, and to kind of make it even, you just pat it under the bottom real lightly, and do them both like that, just to get the air pockets out of it, and make it a little even under. Okay. So it won't be warp side. Okay, I'm going to put these in the oven at 325 for 20 to 25 minutes. And I'll get back with you. Okay. 
Okay, while the cake is cooking, I'm going to show you how to make a buttercream lemon frosting to go on top of that delicious cake. Now I want to use uh, the Philadelphia cream cheese is what I prefer, but you can use whatever brand you want, the 8 ounce size. I'm using the original. And I'm uh, going to mix together first that with 4 tablespoons of soft butter, room temperature butter. Okay, now that I've blended that, you want to make sure it's blended. It's blended about three minutes because, you know, your cream cheese is a little hard coming from the refrigerator. So blend it until it has this uh, consistency. And then you want to add a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And a teaspoon of the lemon extract. Close those up so I won't knock them over. And then you want to blend that together. And then you want to add your uh, heaping teaspoon of your lemon zest and you're going to blend that blend it on low so you want to have uh, icing in all of your cabinets so always blend low and then gradually Pick your speed up when you blend it. Okay, then we want to add two uh, drops of your yellow food color. One, two. Okay, blend. Low. Scrape your sides. That your frosting of be all the same color. Shade. It's going to be fabulous. And like I said before, when I cook, we eat. So this is to dessert for New Year's Day. And we'll have fajita for dinner. And I'll show you that recipe on down the line at a later time. Okay, you got that mix. It's kind of a light pale yellow. And like I said, you can make that as dark as you want. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is add the powdered sugar. And I'm going to add a cup at a time. Now, I, me, myself, I don't like a lot of icing because it's just be too sweet and you can't taste the cake to me. But if you want, you can double what I'm saying and if you like a whole bunch of icing. But uh, I'm going to start out with one cup of powdered sugar. And I'm going to mix that in. Just a little bit at a time, so it won't go wild on me.
already smell that cake with the bacon and it smells delicious. Okay, now I'm gonna add another cup of powdered sugar a little bit at a time. Which will make a total of two cups of your powdered sugar. And like I said, if you want more, feel free to double it. If you're an icing lover. Okay. And a little bit at a time. And it's always best to cream your butter and, and cream cheese first before you add your powdered sugar. That keeps it from lumping all up. I learned that the hard way. Because I was trying to mix it all at one time. But you live and learn. And bake and learn. you put your icing because you don't want your icing to melt unless you want it to melt on there but I always let mine cool for about 15 minutes after it come out and then I'll make sure it's thoroughly cool and then icing it and there's your frosting your butter frosting for your cake so when it comes out I'll get back with you and we'll have fun frosting it okay Okay, I'll get back with you. Okay, I'm back on this frosting. I added uh, about a tablespoon of lemon juice to give it a little more zest. So I'm mixing that in there. So you can taste it and see if it's lemony enough for you. And if it's not, you can just add lemon juice to it, to your taste. Okay. Now I'm adding the pulp, a little pulp from that lemon that I used in this frosting. And you can do that if you want. This is my uh, little tip that I use just to give it, I like that real tart taste. So this is the lemon that I had used to get my lemon juice off so I was going to make sure I use the entire lemon I don't like to waste lemon so you just blend that up in there and I should be through with this ice now see it'll just give you pulpy balls in there along with your zest and it'll give it a little bit tarty taste kind of cut that sweet a little bit Okay. Now, I've taken my cake out of the oven and let them cool for 15 minutes. And this is what they look like. They're beautiful. Just beautiful. And I'm going to frost them now that they're cool. And here's my frosting, as I said. It's nice and whippy. So I'm going to start with in the middle of the cake and just kind of dump that frosting on there and just smooth it around okay and 
like I said, I don't really like a whole lot of icing, but if you like uh, quite a bit of icing, you can just double this recipe to where you can have plenty of icing. But I just like tasting that cake. It's so good. Now see, that's about how much I put on my measure. About like that. You see those zesty lumps in there? Beautiful. Okay. Now that you have that, then you just take your other layer and put it on the top. And I think I'm going to turn it this time. Turn it that way. Make sure it's even. And don't get panicky if it get a crack in it. You know, you can cover that up with your icing. Okay, now I'm going to icing it. And when you have this layer cake, you have to icing the sides. Once you put that second layer on there, you icing your sides first. If you want your sides icing. Some people don't like their sides icing. So, but I like the sides icing, so you just kind of Swirl it down and spin it around until you get the sides covered. I'll bring it on around so you can see it here. My husband came in the house and he said, man, that cake, I smell it on the front porch. And we've got eight inches of snow here, so that snow makes you want to bake. You want something warm and delicious. So, this is what we're going to have today for dessert. It's light. It's not a heavy cake. So you don't feel like bloated when you finish it, even though you want more than one slice. So just eat a little bit at a time. I'll show you how it looks all the way around. It's just beautiful. And that's plenty of icing for a two layer. And if you want a three layer, then you just double your four layer, double your cake mix uh, recipe. And you can make it as tall as you want. Because it will make a beautiful four in it, a four layer cake. Never tried a four layer cake, but I think it would be awful beautiful. Just make sure you get your sides. The sides are a little uh, challenging sometimes. Put quite a bit on the sides. That way it will cover up that cake showing. I'll do one layer thin first and then go back around. It. Give it time to kind of adjust to the cake itself. So good. See how it's coming along on the sides.
is how much I have left in this on the box. See? I can never put that. Let the sides rest a few minutes. And then put some in the top. And make swirlies out of it. And give it that little wavy look. Make sure you cover the entire cake. Put it out here so you can see it a little better. It's kind of a shaded area over here sometimes. But just make your little dips in it. Don't they look delicious? Mm -hmm. Okay, here we have the icing cake. You see how delicious it looks? And my signature is to leave that little brown border around the edges. But if you want to cover the entire cake, you have plenty of icing left to do that. But I always like to leave that little brown uh, ring. That's just something I've always done and I like the way it looks. Now... I'm going to garnish this top of the frosting. I'm going to garnish it with a little more zest of the lemon. And I mixed a little lime in there just to give it a little pretty look. So I'm just going to just garnish the top a little bit. Not very much. To just give it that real pretty look. Maybe. Okay, and that's about enough right there. Just to give it a little pretty garnish look. And then I'm going to let that sit a little bit. Let it rest. And then I'll come back and plate it and taste it. So, stay tuned. I'll be back. Now, I have plated the, the uh, lemon delicious cake. And I have an official taster, of course. So, I'm going to have him it is taste, I. taste it. Taste the cake and see what you think. Mm. Melts in your mouth. Have another taste. I sure will. Ooh, got that lemon twang to it. Mmm. Mmm. Now you gotta you, you hear the sound so you mm. know it is delicious. That's the that's my tongue it's jumping so, up slapping my brain. It's so light and fluffy. So if you want to experience the same thing, Woo! be sure to subscribe and also comment below. And if you like it, please give me thumbs up and let me know what you think. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Have a good day.